So we saw that Deborah prophesied that God sent the enemy armies against them at Kishon. By the way, Kishon means to set a trap and to lay a snare for your enemy. I want you to just let that sink in for a minute. What God is doing right now is he's setting a trap and laying a snare for our enemy. What God is doing right now is setting a trap and laying a snare for our enemy. God caused torrential rains to fall and swept the enemy armies away. The leader, the captain of that army ran away and actually went into the tent of a woman named J.L. Sweet little tent wife. She didn't have a house. She just had a tent. Sweet little tent wife. She said, sure, come on in. Have a little drink. Covered him up. Take a little nap. I'll guard the door. And I love how it says it in Scripture. It says, and when he fell asleep, she went softly to him. Very feminine. Softly. And it says, and she took a tent peg and a hammer... And she drove the tent peg through his temple into the ground. And I like what the Bible says. It says, and so he died. (laughs) Just in case that wasn't clear. And so he died. Where God is taking us is not for the faint of heart. We're going to have to understand that God is just not anointing us only to be a family, but he's raising us up to be an army. And if that language offends you, let me just say that Matthew 11 verse 12 declares the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence take it by force. And God is looking for a generation that is willing to say, God, I'm going to be raised up. I'm going to allow you to use me to take some things out of the jaws of death, hell, and the grave. I'm going to take captives out. I'm going to take uh, miracles out. I'm going to take finances out. I'm going to take our nation out. And I will see your glory in this earth because I am taking it by force. NIV says it this way, the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. God is looking for forceful men and women these days that are willing to lay hold of the kingdom in the midst of dark and difficult times. I tell you what, if you watch the news, I know know Brother Hank said he doesn't watch the news. I don't watch the news much because there's not very many options. Be honest, right? But if you watch the news, you you can get a little depressed. But if you pray in the spirit, let me guarantee you, you will start feeling an excitement in the spirit that you've never felt before. Come on, this 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 group of of leaders over here, can y'all feel it? I mean, do you we've never been here before. We've never been here before. We've never been at this point in time ever in history before where God is getting ready to do something that is going to sweep not just this nation but the entire world. Amen. God is breaking us out of one cycle, bringing us in. In the days of Deborah when when J.L. put that tent peg through that man's head, it says, then the land had rest 40 years. You know what we're doing? We're warring for our future generation. We're warring for a nation, and we're warring for generations. And I believe that God's just saying, listen, you've got to understand, I see the difficulty that you're going through personally. But the Lord says, lift up your eyes and understand that what I'm doing in the earth is bigger than you. It doesn't mean that God doesn't care about your situation and your circumstance, but we've got to be so understanding that what God wants to do is so much bigger than just our own individual breakthrough. Amen? What God wants to do is so much bigger than what we can even imagine. And what we've got to understand is that it's a double portion season. I prophesied that. It's a double portion season. We know the story of Elijah and Elisha. I'm not going to preach that. But you know, one of the things the Lord said to me about the double portion is he said, it's one portion for you to meet every need that you have and a second portion for you to give away to bring breakthrough for others. Come on, how many want to have 
many want to have so much healing that you're walking in divine health? And enough healing that you can lay hands on the sick and see the sick recover. Come on, we had one of our ministers lay in a, in a, 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 a ventilator coma for 11 days. And the Lord told us on the ninth day, they said, they said she, we're losing her. Even on a ventilator, she only has 60% oxygen. We're losing her. And we began to prophesy just like Ezekiel 37, prophesying into the valley of dry bones, prophesying breath, prophesying life. And I want you to know, as we began to prophesy to her within the hour, within the hour, her oxygen level went from the low sixties to the high nineties. She came off that ventilator two days later. She was completely healed, completely restored. Come on guys. We got to understand that we've got power and that we need to start using our power and we need to break free from the shackles of fear that the enemies try to put upon us and that we got to understand that if something's going to change it's because we change it <laughs> 20 year cycles we're breaking into a whole new season a little messy isn't it <laughs> another 20 year cycle is um, Jacob and Esau's mother was barren for 20 years God's breaking barrenness not just off women, God's breaking barrenness off the church. She produced, after 20 years of barrenness, she produced two babies, double portion. Not going to tell you that whole story, but remember, Jacob was a little bit of a deceiver, a whole lot of a deceiver. But it says, God loved Jacob. Doesn't that comfort you that God loved Jacob? He was a mess. God loved Jacob. There's days that I just say, God, thank you that you love Jacob. And God sent Jacob after he stole his brother's birthright and stole his father's blessing, sent him to live with his uncle Laban in another land. And guess what? God took Jacob the deceiver and put him under a bigger cheater and a bigger deceiver to work the deceiver out of Jacob. Some of you just got a revelation of this last season you've been in. And after 20 years of being under Laban, God said, it's time for you to go home and get your possession. It's time for you to break out of your Laban season. That's what God's saying to the church. Time to break out of our Laban season. Come on, you know what? He could have settled there. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that are believers that are deciding to settle. And God is saying, I'm looking for people that are hungry. I'm looking for people that want it all. I want, I'm looking for people that want the inheritance that's in the land, that you want a nation and you want generations. I'm looking for Jacobs that have been through the process. Come out of Laban's camp. Come out of casual, comfortable Christianity. It's, it does not satisfy. God is saying, I'm looking for people that are hungry. 